So ladies and gentlemen, the stage is all set for the panel discussion and I'm sure this is going to be a grueling session and uh, to begin with our panel discussion, may I call upon our panelists, may I call upon Mr. Vikram Sakuja, Group CEO, Medicine Media and OOH. May I also welcome on stage uh, Mr. Shashi Sinha, CEO, IPG Media Brands. I love to call upon uh, Ms. Kavita Nair, Chief Digital Transformation Officer, Vodafone Idea Limited. I'd also like to welcome Ms. Anupriya Acharya, Chief Executive Officer, Publicist Media India. And last but not the least, may I call upon Mr. Amin Lakhani, COO, South Asia Mindshare. that our esteemed panel is here on the stage. It's time to call upon without whom this panel would not be complete. So may I please call upon Mr. Naval Ahuja, co-founder and director, Exchange for Media Group, to be the session chair for today's panel discussion. Thank you so much, sir. And I hereby call the Thank panel so open. <coughs> Thank you for staying back for this panel. Well, uh, uh, you know, what I thought was, uh, uh, before we uh, discuss what's happening with the agency's ecosystem and what uh, the future of agencies is, as the topic says, unlocking potential. By the way, Nazia was supposed to moderate this panel and she told me to do it two days back. So I thought what we'll do is, we'll contextualize what's happening in the larger ecosystem, brands, agencies and media, and then figure out, then talk about, you know, what's, what's, what's the future looking like, what agencies need to do. So. Quick ones, you know, we know what's happening this year. There's been so much disruption. There's, you know, economic challenges. There is, you know, impact of uh, regulation-driven things like NTO. There is obviously the digital, you know, story that continues to, uh, you know, drive the agenda over the last few years. Video, OTT, digital online, video consumption pulling through. Uh, so that's putting a lot of pressure on lots of parts of the advertising and the media ecosystem. I remember on uh, 12th of February this year, we unveiled the Pitch Medicine Report and uh, Mr. Balsara went on stage and said, happy days are here again. Uh, we are sitting in September now, 24th to be precise. In six months, the mood has drastically changed, right? Uh, last month, we also, uh, you know, revised the numbers downwards. Uh, NTO, of course, was one big factor. Uh, it created a lot of disruptions. What, what I want to know from the panelists I'll start with Vikram, which I'm sure a lot of uh, uh, people sitting in this room want to know. Are things going to get worse or you think things will get better? Okay. Uh, first, let me just put in perspective the downgrading. I don't want to only spell uh, doom and gloom out here. Interestingly, when we downgraded the entire growth for the year in the Pitch Madison report, the only one that we really dropped was TV by about six, seven points. And the reason was because nobody saw the NTO and, well, we saw the NTO happening, but we didn't see the implications of that. And that really led to a whole lot of uh, advertisers actually developing cold feet, understandably so, and therefore reducing uh, the spends on TV. The rest of the mediums actually moved quite as per plan. Second quarter also grew on the back of increased IPL, on the back of uh, a new World Cup, and on the back of elections. That also grew reasonably well. It's the third quarter with all the doom and gloom, which is threatening to look a little soft. We had only put 7% growth on the third quarter. It probably won't reach there. Fourth quarter now with the FM's latest announcements, I have a, I have a, I'm pretty sanguine. I'm an eternal optimist. I actually think the last quarter is going to bounce back a little bit. So you stick it will not be as bad. I think we're going to have a growth this year versus last year for sure. Not. I know we're going to have a growth. And how much the growth is, remains to be seen. Will it be 13 or will it be 10, 11 or 9? That remains to be seen, but it will be a growth. So there's a possibility of uh, the number yes, being the calendar re revised again. Shashi, what's your take? Uh, the last report said 13% for the year, down from 16. No idea on the numbers because uh, I'm not, as you know, a numbers person like my friend here, you know. So I was, one day, I must tell you a small story before this. So our fellows in Bangalore put out a report which they call the Magna report. So I was very interested about what they put out. 
Then I said, one day I want to do deep dive. So how do you do it? So they said, we pick up Group M, Madison, publicist, then you do an average of that. So that's how it is. So I have no clue on what the numbers are, but I think the larger point, so if you ask me, I'm not a this thing. So I, my, the larger point is, it was looking tough uh, this quarter. And uh, uh, I think the latter part of the year, November, December, will be tough. But what's happened on Friday, the sentiment has probably changed. And as you know, the economy is in a bit of a trouble for two reasons. One, there's some structural issues especially in finance. We work with a lot of auto clients and as a result, we are seeing the heat. Uh, so there is some structural issues which are not going to go away. It's going to be slightly long term. But there is a sentiment also and the sentiment will turn around with what's happened on Friday. So net net, I don't know whether it will be better than last year or not. But what we were predicting in the next two months probably will be better than that. Right. Kavita, will your ilk spend more after the government's announcement? <laughs> so I think telecom industries, of course, has a different problem than what the media industry is. Uh, and, but for me, I think it's not about spending more, but how do you really spend that money and where are the consumers? So my view will be sometimes a little bit contrarian to the rest of the panel as to uh, do you, what is spending more means and where do you spend more? So tell me, <coughs> since you seek ROI, of course, on what you spend, where do you think agencies can do better, especially in today's environment? Uh, do, you, do you think there is something lacking in terms of skill, expertise, data analytics? What more can they do to give you better ROI? Yes, I don't think it's about anything lacking. I just is that the world is evolving. The world is evolving, so I don't, think, I don't see it from the lens of lacking. Remember, I have digital transformation as a hat, including brands. So, uh, the way customers react and the consumers are reacting with how media was consumed, uh, how advertising was consumed five years ago to today is very, very different. And in that, how are we able to evolve business models and operating models is the key question uh, for all of us. Uh, to really reach to that segment of one, and to reach to that segment of one, you need a lot of enablers. Uh, and in that, I think there are the big two enablers are people and technology, uh, with data being at the core of it. Uh, and all of us have to work harder to reach to that segment of one. You're being diplomatic. <laughs> so what, what, so tell, tell us granularity. What can, what, what specifically can an agency do? Your agency or, you know, uh, other agencies working for many other brands. What exactly can you do, can they do to bring more knowledge, more insights to the table? So I think the first is challenge existing models, their own challenge status quo. I think we are all seeped in um, the world that we saw and the world that we grew up in. So uh, we see the world as ATL, BTL, TV, print, outdoor. I don't think the consumer processes it that way anymore. I don't know how many people look at outdoor when they are moving. Are they on their smartphones or are they looking there? Uh, what is compelling content? Uh, is monologue working? Is it dialogue what is working for the customer? So all of these are questions and these questions are there because there are 460 million people who are on their phones and the way they are consuming their from whether it's phones or screens uh, and how do we really change that? And I think for me, the agency ecosystem, whether it is um, creative agency, media agency, digital agency, all of them have to really question that to get to problem solving rather than worry about ki mera dhanda, mera PNL aur usme ye kaise hoga. Because if you solve for this, you will get more money. Let me assure yeah. you. So Arupriya, you think we are, we have we've made some headway into getting there? Are we, are we able to make a crack at this? I know there's a lot of things agencies have tried in the last few years from, you know, acquiring digital agencies to acquiring data analytics companies to changing the way we are thinking, executing, but are we able to get somewhere uh, close to where, where the client's expectations are? I think surely so. Uh, I, like Kavita said that uh, this is an evolving place. So there is no such thing as uh, this, this, this is the transformation which has happened in the market and have we reached there and addressed that or not. 
uh, it's it's con uh, continuously evolving and there are newer challenges coming newer opportunities coming in the market and the whole thing uh, for uh, all service providers, uh, including agencies, essentially is to ensure that they evolve at that pace or faster than the market. And towards that, we've seen all the, I mean, we can talk of our group, but all the key agency groups, we've seen enough and more conversation around investment, around uh, data, technology, data science, uh, analytics, commerce, and areas which had never been in the past uh, been uh, say, uh, say core competencies for agencies and the conversations that we have today in terms of uh, data and technology and all of that are very, very different from what were happening, forget 10 years back, but were ha happening even three years back. The kind of solutions that are being provided to the client. Now, one, may, one can argue that they are absolutely solving for everything or possibly are lagging in some areas and definitely advanced in other areas. One can argue that. But have there, has there been a shift in the needle at an overall level across agency groups? I think most certainly so. But tell me, are, are large agency groups well equipped to compete with, you know, startups, young upstart kids who have a data analytics company? I know a lot of the agencies have acquired these young startups, but it's just so diffused, you know, to, you acquire three and another three, you know, come up tomorrow. Are large groups, how do large groups, let me, you know, rephrase it, how do large groups equip themselves to compete with this young, you know, 25-year-old startups like Kavita said, you know, we are, we are living our own sort of youth or, or our younger self when, uh, you know, uh, when we were consuming media. W what do the large agencies do? How do you compete in an ecosystem where, you know, competition is coming from, you know, all over the place? So I can give an uh, example from my own experience, of course. Uh, so acquisition definitely is one area, and I've seen increasingly acquire groups, uh, acqu across group, there has been a lot of acquisitions. I can give you an uh, example of performance marketing, for example. This was something which is up and coming uh, five, seven, eight years back, and we acquired two companies in that space. And just like you said, they were just startups and just a shop, shops of 50, 80 people. Uh, today, combined, they are more than 700 people, and that is essentially the one is the market dynamics because suddenly that whole area became extremely hot and extremely important for the clients. So here you have a specialist expertise which is totally focused on that one aspect, and as a network you provide. Uh, everything else around that so they don't have to waste their time on on uh, possibly hunting, on possibly connections with clients, on possibly s figuring out how does that really solve for a larger client uh, problem and providing them the infrastructure and any sort of uh, funding that is very, very important to grow these services at scale. And the same thing can be spoken about commerce today, the same thing can be talked about data and tech. So that is one way, which is the acquisition route, and I have seen it work very, very well across quite a few agency groups. Uh, the second, of course, is you can always also hone that skill. So for some of the uh, some of the solutions, for example, we have searched in the market and have not found there. Uh, and we've uh, developed uh, in-house solutions for that, and which have worked very well, not, not for us only in India, but we've also exported to outside, uh, outside to our network as well. So both manners, it, it can work in, in both the manners. And I okay. think nobody is giving you run an Indian company, so, yeah, so I wanted to come look, to you. Uh, no, to your question on these wonder kids at 25 versus old war horses, I think old war horses also have a role to play. What the younger, the wonder kids bring is fantastic technical capability, great curiosity, they're a devil may care kind of attitude, which is fantastic, very bold guys. And they, they're very good in terms of being able to manage the digital ecosystem, navigate the way through it and come out with answers. What they sorely lack is strategic maturity and any knowledge of the brand and anything, any knowledge outside of a digital domain. So actually the Jugal Bandi works very well. So just surround yourself with these young guys. You have enough to offer them, and they have, of course, a lot to bring to the party. So it's not us or them. Sure. I mean, you. <coughs> Rekma says you run uh, one of the largest agencies in India, largest one actually. So uh, the largest one. That's what I I corrected myself. So tell me, uh, of course, when you are that big in size, volume and the muscle you command in the market does uh, play a very big role in you know how you perform. But what about the other elements, you know, uh, delivering better ROI, data analytics, working, are you as open to working with smaller upstarts? Uh, what does Mindshare do? 
what does you know group m do to uh, sort of make sure that the clients stay engaged i think we've been <coughs> in the country uh, for now over 20 25 years uh, close to 25 years in, in in many ways and some of the relationships of the clients that we have uh, are spanning over 10 years 12 years 15 years so i think you cannot you know sustain a relationship uh, with clients uh, on an ongoing basis unless and until you keep reinventing yourself uh, at every juncture and, and you know if you look at the trajectory of our industry over the last 15 18 years i think uh, you know today the world that i am seeing uh, is way different from the way i used to see it say 18 months ago so that's the kind of multiplier that we are talking about and that's the kind of chaos that we are dealing with i think the answer is uh, are we <coughs> are we being very very complacent in our past and in our past glory uh, like kavita mentioned uh, do we have the mindset of challenging status quo uh, and i think is there a mindset of you know uh, inviting or learning and unlearning uh, that we are building on an ongoing basis you know uh, it's very important to have a, a startup mindset uh, even in a large organization wherein you have 800000 people who work with you uh it doesn't come easily but i think that's the need of the hour if you don't do that then perhaps you'll collapse and you'll disappear so what what pushes agencies out of their comfort zones because we all know you know that's true for all businesses if business is good you're riding the tide you know uh, you continue to do the same thing what <coughs> what is it that pushes agencies is it is it threat of you know younger upstarts taking your business away is it uh, you know clients calling for pitches for price discovery i think it's hunger to do better than what you did yesterday uh, if you ask me and uh, if if there is no hunger uh, whether clients call you for pitches or don't call you i think pitches is not a new norm pitches has been there in our industry for as long as i was born in the industry so the first day when i came i thought there was a pitch and then yesterday we attended a pitch and all of that so i think that that doesn't change right we can crib uh, in 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 the in, in the side room and we can all crib and laugh over it but uh, i think that's a norm and uh, that will continue to happen uh, as agencies are we geared up to improving on efficiencies and you know improving effectiveness and the answer is right uh, so I, i don't think there are any complaints over there we we know that this is the size and this is the method and this is the character where does it stop uh, in the 20 years lots of uh, i mean i have been hearing last two three years maybe three four years a lot of the pitches have been about you know more price efficiency but uh, what in makes fact, you last year <coughs> my uh, only question is that what makes you think that if there are no pitches there are no efficiency conversations you know so i don't think there's a client and i'm saying clients are asking not only to their agency partners but also within themselves that is there an efficient way of doing things you know if i am doing things in say 100 rupees can i do it in less than 100 can i do 2 in 100 uh and you know stuff like that i think they're asking the, the questions themselves and within their own processes and their own functionalities but uh, so i don't think that's a question only for agency partners and i think as agency partners we are asking the questions the same questions for our clients and we are asking the same questions internally to ourselves that can we do this better if there are 10 people required can we do it in 9 people uh if we charge 100 rupees can we do it in 95 or you know what and so on so forth. let me ask you uh let me ask actually shashi a question on you know since we are talking about uh pricing efficiency uh last 3 4 years as i mentioned a lot of the pitches have been about pricing efficiency media pricing i don't know whether you know we've reached bottom yet because last year uh, the triple as of i had to an ins and ibf got involved everybody had to issue a so called you know diktat and it still kind of lot of pitches continue in the same same vein uh and this coming in an environment when business already is tough because of you know multiple issues that have happened demonetization and then gst and then you know economic challenges this year and you and so on and so forth what do you think you know where does it stop is there is there a solution or the market will f- find its own bottom give two answers one answer is uh, the ecosystem is reacting without uh, getting into details of what is happening as you see in the various associations are saying this is untenable so i think efficiency as i mean said is desirable the better you get over a period of time the more it is but this whole pitching thing which you alluded to has got a lot of side effects which may not be real 
and uh, you see in the ecosystem reacting is just uh, eight nine months ten months as it's happened and i think it's uh, a good sign it will only uh, improve i mean for a industry which is working in a particular way for the last 10 12 years maybe more to make so much progress in the last eight nine months i think they will this will go away the larger point i want to and sorry i want to react to something which vikram said uh, and which you know this whole thing of uh, brand custodian and stewardship versus lower funnel action in terms of uh, uh, you know performance which is alluded to i want to narrate a story and two stories in fact many years back mr vilsara who is here in the audience was being felicitated for his lifetime achievement and said something which was the stayed with me for so many years he said i got into the business and i if i remember rightly this is what he said that i got into this business because there's a power of communication communication is something to achieve and deliver and bring consumers and add value to brands as a result of which we are there we are seen as adding value whatever you call them consultants whatever value you call them cut to yes i am giving in snapshot what he said sir have i got it right broadly so uh, i cut to uh, last evening so there's a large fmc advertiser he and me were driving together and he was saying you have so much auto and what has gone wrong so i said what's your prognosis so he said two things have happened and i will not quote him loose because he was very lucid in what he said he said one that you know they all the advertising is around launches they forgotten this thought of doing theme communication building brands all they're doing is doing the launch then they get out it's all pricing and then it's all low funnel action on digital and he was taking the big boys name saying these guys are to blame and it's a self fulfilling prophecy so if you connect what mr balsara said about and what vikram said today about brand stewardship and communication and then tying it up with low funnel action i think that's the crux so a phase will come when advertisers and the ecosystem will realize this is not enough we have to move towards delivery and finally we'll build win back up place with the sun whether that happens in 6 months 1 year i don't know it's already happening with certain clients so our agencies uh somewhere lacking in being able to convince clients that you know in even times like these more advertising is the way or at least that much advertising is the way and not lesser i am not sure so if i may take the liberty from outside to give kavita's example i think some of the best stewardship in terms of brand which you see in the communication comes from uh, the company which is part of i am also sure what i will heard of low funnel action in terms of performance comes from there so they've got the ecosystem right and i'm sure there are many such clients uh, there i don't want to want to get into price discovery and efficiency that's a separate discussion that every client demands is due but beyond a point that's not the they're not looking for the bottom of the barrel and i know many such clients and i'm sure all of us have there so i think mature clients realize this that what mr basara said many moons back that finally we are in the business of delivering value and value is not necessarily lower funnel action value starts from the top am i right sir vikram what's your take how do we convince clients to spend more in this this environment okay um short answer to that is with ideas and analytics if you give them great ideas they'll buy them if you give them reasons to spend they'll spend very simply put that way bottom line effectiveness at one day has to become more important than efficiency efficiency story is easier to tell effectiveness story is a little bit more difficult to understand there have been times when you've actually told a client with these analytics you spend and you will get your i remember the numbers also we said you will get your awareness point awareness from 34 to 45 and we took it till 46 same plan my god that's got to be something no i mean there was there was proper science modeling it actually happened so now is that valued no you take it for granted oh, analytics did it but somewhere along the line over time we maybe i think we have to we have to probably sell our effectiveness stories better i think we are doing a lot of them maybe we are underselling them all good but the procurement guy says you know i have 30% lesser money this year how do so you come to that we can't wish them away much as we'd like to so the 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 con the the contra conversation has to be much louder and much more resonant than the procurement guys so for every time like if for example procurement guy comes and says don't take producer xyz to make this film because he's so expensive and go for one some faltu guy who's actually charging very little the marketing guy definitely puts his cloud and say sorry i want the best because this film depends on it why are they being able to trump the procurement guy there somewhere the the conversation is that those guys are worth their money so probably they are not feeling the same thing way with us and that's an, that's a conversation we have to improve i mean what's your take 
Yeah, I just wanted to add to that. I think the whole conversation is not as linear as it used to be earlier. That, uh, you know, how do we get the clients to spend more? The conversation has sometime back shifted to how do we get the clients to be successful? Because all, all the companies we can see are under tremendous margin pressure. They themselves are reinventing their ways of working to ensure that they are, uh, you know, relevant in, in, in this day and age. And uh, I think across the board, it has changed from how do we get them to spend more to how can we get them successful, which means how can we possibly help them to sell more. And the two not necessarily are directly correlated. There are solutions outside of only spending more also, which, uh, which uh, can help clients and, and uh, definitely those are also added beyond just like increasing their budget. So I mean, data analytics and everything, of course, uh, makes it work harder and the whole conversation around procurement and negotiation makes it work harder, but uh, the conversations are no longer limited only to how we can get them to spend more. I think it's extremely important to be playing ball with the client in terms of how can we make Fair them enough. successful. Yes. I mean, you wanted to say something. <coughs> I think uh, Anupriya has rightly articulated and before that Vikram as well. I think we are here to drive business for our clients. And I think as long as we, we stick to that narrative, whether it is driving it through upper funnel or activating the lower funnel or by better consumer understanding or by decoding the data and the consumer footprint much better. I think whatever we do, whichever part of the consumer journey we activate, if you are being able to make a case that this will drive your business better than yesterday, I think there is a case and I am 110% sure the client will walk with you. So I think it, it, it's more of that than just thinking that, you know, how do I make him spend more? or, you know, spend more on TV versus, you know, digital and all that. I think those are, those are how-tos and we can deal with them later on. But I think the core focus is that how does all your actions try and drive business. That brings me to another point since you mentioned TV. You know, we've seen what's happened last few years, especially one, the growth of digital and second this year, the disruption caused by NTO. What we've all noticed is that uh, the stronger larger networks have become stronger, most of the growth has gone to the larger ones and the mid-size and the smaller ones have got squeezed out. How does that impact the agency business? Is, is the larger, stronger players getting even more stronger? Is that good or bad for the advertising business? Does that reduce your you know, ability to be able to you know, deal with them on things like pricing, efficiency and stuff? And how do you kind of deal with that next two, three years? Because consolidation, like it has partly happened on the agency side of the ecosystem, it is also happening on the television media side. I think the, the macro environment, and if I were to just use this analogy and see it outside of television, then you see that happening in digital as well. And you see it in many of the sectors as well, that you know, and, and, and the same kind of trend that we are seeing. However, uh, my principle or our principle is very, very clear that we will, we will invest in places which deliver eyeballs. So if there are eyeballs, money will flow automatically. If there are no eyeballs, then the money dries up. So I think if, if, if there is a case for a platform or a partner, whether it's a TV channel, whether it's a digital platform, whether it's radio, whether it's anybody, if there are eyeballs, money will flow in. Uh, if there are nothing, if there, if there is none, then you don't just kind of start feeding into it. I think all other conversations then are, are subsequent and you know, you can, you can, you can, you can, you could do that. Yeah, I tend to agree with Amin and disagree with you. I don't think the strong networks on TV, especially TV, unlike a Google, Facebook on digital, in TV, the dominant networks don't necessarily mean make the other guys redundant or useless. I think wherever there are, rate, in fact, in today's environment, you need more channels to get reach because, I mean, even your best GC channel in a week is not getting more than 35, 36% reach. Gone are the days when uh, the top channel would get 75-80% reach. So you need more channels to typically build your reach, even small guys. The guys who have to worry about are, the in today's environment, are the people who are bought not on ratings, but on effective rate. Those guys are getting, being put under the most scrutiny because you don't even know whether the damn channel is being put into the package or not. Yeah. So those are the guys who have to worry about, but if you're delivering ratings, you're okay. The unfortunate part is, and I say it is the unfortunate part for many reasons, which country in the world where you have one, two, three, four networks buying 85% on television? So that answers your question. So there is consolidation, that's what I mentioned. There is consolidation on one side, it's gradually happening on the other side. Kavita, 
have you have you have you uh, you've been part of vodafone for a long time so as the media you know especially the television because you've been a heavy user of television first <coughs> ipl was sponsored by Vodaf vodafone have you seen the kind of aggregation of good quality content on tv on one side impacting what's happening at your end in terms of how you are approaching plans and buying media yes i think uh, so i must confess that I came back to marketing about after 10 years of doing various other things in the same company. Uh, and uh, for me, I was surprised by two things. One is there are things that have remained the same and there are things that have changed. And the things that have remained the same is what I think Shishi alluded to, to saying that how do we reach out to the consumer? It doesn't start with what are the mediums that we reach or that we need to do to do advertising as much as how do we really get the share of mind and share of heart, uh, which is what we've always said. So how do we really have great storytelling? Uh, and that storytelling can be in different forms. You know, it can be, it used to be three minutes to now 30 seconds. So I think that has remained the same. The things that have changed are how do we really approach some of this, which includes media. So this year, uh, IPL, uh, we were not on television and we were only on we digital. Only That's right. Um, so we experiment and we do these things and it's got nothing to do with whether television is working or not, uh, but what is really helping us from what is it that we would want to do with our consumers and in this case it was a whole load of activation rather than just doing awareness stuff. So if that really works, um, uh, and then when I've come back to marketing, and I mean, unfor unfortunately or fortunately has been part of these discussions as to how do these mediums really stack up and how do we really use them wisely uh, for the overall brand agenda that you need to really follow. And that brand agenda is to reach the share of heart of the consumer, which is changing. So they, are, they don't really want this monologues. They don't want us to really topo advertising, right? How is it? Why are they buying subscription-led stuff? Because they can see content without advertisers coming in. That is a challenge. But I see that as an opportunity, saying that it really makes you uh, think more on how do you really become better storytellers, because anybody and everybody loves a good story. What about digital? You know, television, of course. Digital already has significant consolidation at one end. Yeah. If you look at Google, Facebook, they pretty much have 85 percent, 80, 85 percent of the market globally and also in India. I was told without taking names, one of the large networks, agency networks, grew on the back of digital advertising last few years and two of their key markets in the Asia Pac region, billing has collapsed because, you know, these companies are now directly going to clients. <coughs> so, you know, Martin Sorel famously called them frenemies few years back. Yeah. Uh, one, is that a threat to the agency ecosystem? One, a lot of client money shifting there and then being sort of you know, bypassed to how do you deal with that? So I think, so my view on digital is that insourcing is going to happen. And uh, we are in the middle of that. Uh, and when that happens, how do you really look at your agency partner? Do they really do strategic uh, consulting work with you to help you drive that better? Or do you really go back to what was the, you know, efficiency world that we were talking about? If you get into the efficiency world, and if you then say that, oh, you know, my top line, my this thing, you will get, you will just go down. But if you really say that this is a reality, this is going to happen, and how do I really change the value equation? Because I know my partner really well, and I think both of them really said valid points that how do I really make my client successful? And in that, if this is the way they're moving, how do I really partner to shift the conversation from whether it should be uh, insourced or not insourced or you know so that is how I look at it and for Vodafone it has really uh, helped us uh, and both it is not just that means insourcing has helped as well as our equation with our agency partners has really moved further notches ahead because Shashi said right otherwise everything goes down to the bottom of the funnel top of the funnel bhul jate so how do you really forget all of this and say that what is the overall agenda and how do you really, the yeah. cohort of partners that you have, how do you really drive that? Does it threaten you, I mean, how yeah. Google Facebook <coughs> are rising? It's been kind of the story of the last few years, but it's kind of reaching an inflection point now. Yeah. I think many things threaten us uh, <laughs> uh, on a daily basis. So, uh, yeah, and Google, Facebook are, are great friends. But 
uh, I think if you step back and if you if 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 you start looking at it, uh, you know the, the critical point is that world over and the markets, especially now in India, if you look at last two three years after geo post geo and all of that, I think there is enough uh, publishing networks, uh, you know, uh, platforms which are emerging, and they're achieving critical mass of of audiences on themselves. And slowly that trajectory is only going to move and take shape for that. So it's a matter of another year, year or two, uh, that you know the, the, the shift in the balance and the shift in the equation will happen very soon. We are already seeing the early signs. I think most of the big agency partners are, are working towards making sure that you know, uh, that ecosystem also thrives going forward. Uh, I think a biggest enabler that is missing in the industry today, and this is more of a question to the industry uh, and, and, and as, a, as a job to be done right now, is how do we land effective measurement in this ecosystem? And once measurement starts getting landed, uh, you know, you know we, will, we, will, we will then have the same principles that we really want to be and we want to be agnostic so with the platform. How do you get measurement when there are only two guys who… Uh who bring their own data. I mean, I was actually talking to somebody like Star TV going to a planner every week saying this is my ratings. So, that's how it's been. I mean, how do you change it? I mean, it's a, it's a, you know, entirely different conversation. But how do you change it? Is there anything that can be done? Okay. Uh, I'll tell you what's going to, I, I, let's, you were talking about what is it going to take, be to, what is it going to take to get the next big growth thing, right? The one area which is growing today is digital. If they don't fix it, the equivalent of the cola pesticide scare or the chocolate worm, it will require one of these to totally blow up in your face and take out all trust, credibility in digital and the 18,000 crore pie can come crashing like a house of cards. So I'm, and I'm not being sensationalistic. The entire viewability and fraud piece has to be addressed and brand safety I haven't even got into because brand safety is something which at least in this market okay. is not, I mean we don't feel it at an individual level but the other two is becoming a joke and uh, to, for anybody to come back and say that because I can bully you and I'll only give, give you my data and therefore you have to go by that, I think it's a horrible travesty. It just requires advertisers to come up and some of them have taken a bold stance more of them should and say, if you don't give us a standardized viewability and anti-fraud mechanism, we are out. And tools exist. Only thing is everybody is using their own set of tools, none of, none of the ones. What, what, what does it take for the… there are five agencies, right? What does it take for you to get together and say, this is what we want? Do it or, you know, the client ecosystem this, is much more fragmented. At this point in time, every, the, the conversation has been, we have tried to attempt it through industry bodies and it's f failed. And we've been very patient about it and I'll hand it over to somebody who's been in the thick of it, he'll be able to tell you much more. So, so unfortunately, I understand about the ecosystem of measurement in this country. Uh, and I think uh, it's a larger point being made with Vikram just made that finally publishers have to realize that's for their growth, long term growth. Short term, there may be a bit of a pain. So if some numbers come down, some numbers go up, that's a minor thing. And solution is the industry body. So just now while digital measurement has been slow, TVs, we have a robust mechanism going, print, we have a robust mechanism going because my friend on the left. But I think uh, somewhere digital, because there's such strong dominant players uh, there, there is a bit of a resistance and I think I mean touched a run of there. So if all the advertiser fraternity gets together and says, listen, we need third party industry body, because I believe finally industry measurement is the right way to go. Uh, this is a crying need and if this happens, uh, and they have to realize in their head that this has got to do not with one OTT platform versus Google or whatever. It's got to do with, I'm saying a lot in what I'm not saying, that uh, uh, it's got to do for the larger cause because finally it will catch up with you. So till that happens, what happened to television? Television finally eight people sat around the table and said this has to be done. The government got into it. Finally it will happen. So I'm, I'm a, like he said, some of the context uh, eternal optimist. I'm an optimist on measurement. It's, there's pain just now, but uh, it will happen and that Till that doesn't happen, there's going to be chaos and this industry will only mature then. And otherwise, if it doesn't happen, then you have the risk of, to use the strong words, that things can explode.
Anupriya, yeah. Just to add to that, also when you're talking about the, these two large platforms really uh, going direct and all of that, this has been a whole evolution. There was a time that they thought that it was direct was good because they were platforms and they were self-enabled, self, you know, you can land advertising yourself. They were not designed for agencies. And of course, over a period of time, as, as they grew f uh, fast and grew big, they realized that there was a role, that very critical role that the agencies played. And almost like 10 years back is when this whole movement started, when they started engaging with agencies and they realized how much value agencies brought onto the table. So when we talk about some of these cases here and there that, you know, these cases, cases like these have existed in the broadcasting system, in all these systems in the past as well. But those are more like here and there and it is not, it doesn't sort of define how the industry is moving. And more importantly, it is, there are only, it's not only two world gardens that are the present. There are other world gardens also which have come up in the meantime. So you have a whole commerce segment, you have the whole OT segment, everything is becoming a yes. wall garden. It is very tough for a client to keep dealing with multiple wall gardens without a neutral advisor in the center. And hence, to my mind, the role of the agencies will always continue as long as they are clear what is the value that they're bringing onto the table. Okay. Any last thoughts, Amin? I see the clock, <coughs> clock is running out, so we'll do some audience yeah. questions after this. Just that, ache din aane wale. <laughs> We are living in the middle of that. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I'm very hopeful and uh, inspired by the seniors in the industry that, uh, yeah, we are, we are on to, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, if you look at the advertising spends in the country itself, despite the lower growth, we're still beating world averages and, and, and that's not going away. So this is still, the, you know, one of the highest or the fastest growing markets in the world and let's not forget about it. So there is traction. Yeah, there are pockets of, of challenges, but there are also offshoots and green shoots which are coming out. And hopefully with, uh, with the clients being with us and all the agency partners together, uh, we will find the right answer to measurement very soon. See, two more things, you know, before uh, we wrap up and then uh, move to the audience questions. There's a global trend which has been, you know, catching on last few years. All the big four consultancies getting significantly into, you know, at least the digital part of the business you know, curating content, doing data analytics and significant overlap with what the agencies are doing today. It's not really, you know, that big a deal in India yet, but there's no reason why an IBM or an Accenture, you know, come to India and do what they are doing globally and they are pretty aggressive. You know, I, I was reading a Adweek report, the top 10 uh, agency networks, four of them were, you know, global consultancy, the Deloitte, PwC, Accenture and IBM. And, uh, a lot of that growth has come through acquisitions, money for which agencies also are competing. So if you look at, you know, a scenario three years out, uh, which involves, you know, three, four of these trends. One, these global, you know, players becoming more aggressive in India. Uh, second part is, you know, the growth of digital, especially Google, Facebook, as we've discussed. We don't know whether measurement will be solved by then. We don't know whether, you know, the, you know, other issues will be addressed by then. So if you look at a, I'm not looking into long term, nobody knows what's going to happen then, but say a three, four year horizon, where will agencies stand given all of these, you know, because you're getting squeezed from multiple sides. So actually, I think that's a great question because you were talking about Google and Facebook and my, my view was that it's not, and Shashi means, I don't know whether it's an industry ROI world or because the, the, the business models are changing. Why are consulting companies uh, moving to this? Because they know that the, the, their core role of just being a consultant is no more valuable in this digital native era because people have some of that knowledge that and what to drive, right? So, and then e-commerce or OTT. So the, the way the business models are of agencies have to change. <coughs> they have to change because if you do not really evolve your business model, uh, in this new digital era, uh, you will have to face with competition, not only of these uh, insourcing or uh, digital platforms, newer companies which will come in and they may be able to do it better because data analytics technology comes fairly naturally to them. And why are they doing forward or backward integration, how you creative? Because that's not what something that comes easily to them. Uh, so the agency business model has to evolve. It's something to think of whether when we broke the creative uh, media world and we broke into agencies, uh, is this now time back to, you know, do some consolidation there to really solve for 
what are customer that problems and consumer problems. Okay. Question, yeah. So that is that stuff that we should really think about. Quite is simple. I'd be delighted if they come in, because if clients get used to paying them what they pay them, and uh, find that we are delivering something uh, equivalent or close by, we'd be happy. We can get the same talent. We can hire the talent. Conversely, uh, what we get paid. If they can work on those prices, I'd be delighted. It'll screw up the entire global business model there. And I'll just add my two bits. On consultants, I think they bring in superior strategic consulting. They really have a very refined thinking. That's great. I think they are building in fantastic strengths and the data and tech, which even we as agencies, that's a business model change, which, which is it's an imperative. So we're also embracing that. But the part which we have light years of experience more than them is operational expertise. Every time some of these consultants, so to speak, come in as a media auditor to a pitch, man, we have them going around in hoops when they have to find out a simple implementation plan, they're not being able to see through it yes. what even a five-year-old would in our agency would be able to see. So they are woefully, woefully inadequate in actually understanding the rigors of TV, even print, even radio, kind of planning. So is it easier for us to acquire data and tech skills and arguably consultancy versus them trying to get into the nitty gritties of operational planning? I'll give ourselves more, more chances. Right. I mean, you, you want to get in? <coughs> no, I think there's a lot to learn from uh, new players coming out of the market and competition is a welcome and I think there is enough in the market and more are pretty much welcome in that space. And hopefully we will learn a, two, you know, a thing or two from them. Uh, my, my, my concern is not there. My concern is that uh, if you're, you, you decide what you want to do. Do you want to be a police? Or do you want to be the guy who is driving the revenue? So you don't, be, you, 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 you don't come and check things as, as far as the other people's processes and uh, you know, ways of working and all of those things are there. And then go to the client and say, you know what, after checking him, I can tell you that I can do this better for you. So you decide, you want to be in the business of uh, what we are doing, please welcome. We will have one more chair, maybe two more chairs over here and we will have that conversation and we will compete uh, very nicely with you. Uh, but decide on which role you want to do. Fantastic, but that's the direction the world is moving in. I'm sure what, what you're saying will come true. Maybe next year or the year after we'll have to, you know, consultancy rep sitting here. Any, any questions from the audience before we wrap up? Okay, fantastic. That gives me a chance for one final one. You know, before we end, there are five, six points I'd sent you. So I want to ask you if you look at, you know, the next 12 months, what are the things that, you know, as agency brand heads that concern you, especially this, this, this for agencies, you know, there are uh, seven points here. Uh, first and foremost is clients moving some services in house, uh, competition for talent, budget cuts by clients, creating capability for managing data and analytics, keeping up with the automation, marketing tech adoption by clients, or lower media pricing by competition, but by your own ilk. What are these things, if you were to tell me top two or three, three things that you would bother about over the next 12 months? I want to add one more line, all of the above. <laughs> For me, it's one. <laughs> well, you have to choose. I mean, you have to prioritize. Talent. Talent. Of course, I mean, of course, all of these are you know, important. Talent companies. is critical because our business models are not allowing us to hire quality talent or quality talent not being attracted to our industry for a variety of reasons. Uh, you know, so I think if that, that to me that if you fix that, everything else which you said will get fixed. Right. Yeah. Obsession, will that also fix lower pricing by competition? Yes. No, sure. I'm yeah. saying, so if, you, if you fix the larger part of it, you know, that what, what money is one. But the five of the reasons which talent used to come and when Anupriya got in or Vikram got in is a role model, what attracted him to advertising at that point in time may not be necessarily the reason. Yeah. So money is one part, the five other factors, you know, the joy of doing great work rather than the operational excellence he spoke about or, uh, you know, the working hours, work-life balance, there are many other factors. So you will get that right. If you crack good quality talent, rest is taken care of. Right. Vikram? I think you phrase the question in terms of which are the negative kind of forces which are bothering you. It's because all of them have to be addressed. Yeah, but I'd say obsession with pricing bothers me because it's just, there's so much energy that goes into that. And, you know, here's a tip. In fact, you know, for all those guys who are obsessed with pricing, there was always three things. There's a 
the pitch pricing, this is what you actually execute and what you finally report. And that's a whole story and that's a finally a book can be written on that. So it's kind of silly that's what people are chasing and what they're finally getting. Anyway, that's a separate thing altogether. But I think talent and pricing are the two things which concern me. The rest of them are all positive challenges. And pricing is both, of course, competition pricing as well as media pricing. It, it is kind of interlinked. Yeah, of course. Yes, Amin. Go ahead. Yes, yes, that's okay. We'll I think uh, Sashi really summed it up very, very well. I think if I have to choose one between that, uh, I think getting the right talent uh, and having the right kind of people for will solve for many of the other problems. Uh, in my view, it will also solve the pricing problem for me. Last word, Anupya. So uh, for me, it is a world of uh, constant evolution and unlearn and relearn for us is extremely important, not only in our industry in all the industries. It's very important to whatever has worked in the past, for sure, uh, you can't be successful on the back of that in the future. So unlearning and relearning is really the key. Out of the five things I mentioned, which ones are your Competition top Competition for talent, because India is a fast growing market. If you don't have the ability to attract the right talent at scale and at speed and train them and hone them, then everything else that you can do is not going to really reap any benefits because there are there is no talent who's going to deliver on that, right? So competition for talent, I think, is um, and plus you're not only competing within the networks, you're also competing with everybody outside in the industry. That's right. Fantastic. So I think one of the key give takeaways is you know the industry really needs to work on being able to attract better talent, the kind of talent that entered the industry 20 years back. Uh, with that. Uh, Wrapping up the panel, thank you for uh, listening patiently. A big round of applause to all the panelists. Thank you uh, for making it.